own mental health series focuses on addiction. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services says in 2021, more than 16 percent of the population struggled with alcohol or drug abuse. 94 percent of them did not get any treatment. Tonight, we talk with a man whose addiction took him to rock bottom. But with family support and treatment, he has turned his life around and is now giving back by helping others get sober. Jared Barron was a high school superstar, a varsity athlete, a valedictorian with big dreams and a bright future. He was high school president, class president, National Honor Society president, got through college with honors, got through law school with honors and began to practice law and did really well. Barron opened his own law office and started a successful career until his drinking became an addiction. Alcohol led to drugs and drugs brought me down. And as a result, I lost every part of myself that mattered. The fall was hard. Family tried to help, but Jared was on a path that would leave him broke and homeless. I was painfully aware of how far I had fallen up. That fall led Jared to the very place we met, under the Oakland Avenue Bridge on Lansing's Riverwalk, a place Jared once called home. He spent nights in shelters, ate out of dumpsters, and begged for money to feed his addiction. Back when I stayed under this bridge, I wasn't sure what the future would hold. I wasn't sure if there would be a future. Um, it's hard to imagine being where I am today. At that time, it seemed impossible. What seemed impossible was possible, but it would take years and a lot of work to get there. On my worst day, there was still hope. I just didn't always see it. Jared was in and out of rehab trying to get sober. It was during that time he met Carrie, who worked in a drug treatment program. We started talking and I just enjoyed his personality and um, he was fun to be around and um, he seemed to you know, love God and serve God and there we were. They fell in love and got married, but Jared's addiction would resurface and eventually come between them. Their first baby was on the way when Jared had a relapse and Carrie left him. I said, you have to do anything and everything to get sober and then we can talk about being together again. And she basically said she wasn't going to raise a child like this, uh, that she wasn't going to someday tell a two-year-old why daddy didn't come home last night. And uh, I mean, my heart just broke. Uh, and so I had to find, I had to find a way. That breakup would be the catalyst for Jared's recovery. I surrounded myself with people who knew more than I did, who were more successful than I was. We made a plan and I stuck to it. I did a whole bunch of stuff that I really didn't want to do. He was in a group home getting treatment when his first son was born. Jared had a job and worked hard to regain his life and his young family. When I sought the help and received it, I had to rebuild everything personal, financial, emotional, social, everything. My career, and I'm still building. He just took s steps every day to, you know, show me that he really did want to be, you know, the sober man, the sober dad, the sober husband. Um, and now, you know, he's been sober for almost 10 years and you know he, he continues to support the recovery community in many ways. Look what the cat dragged in. Jared and Carrie now have two sons, a family with faith and a lot of hope for a bright future. Your ability to envision a greater future grows the longer you stay sober and consistently do the things you're supposed to do. Jared is on the board of Families Against Narcotics, Okemos and Ingham County. He says he's in a unique position to help others fighting addiction and he does not take it lightly. He was disbarred during his addiction and is now working to get his license to practice law back. If you know someone who is struggling, we've included some links with this story on WILX.com. A cloudy and cold day at